Hey, what's going on guys? It's Teron Studio, and this video is a demonstration on my new product, Dither Tone. Not to be confused with Depth Tone, there's a key difference between the two, and I'll get into that now. Before I do that though, I want to mention that I created a Discord for this community. All designers are welcome to join. Post sneak peeks here sometime, and I answer any questions you guys have, as long as I see it. Um, so if you have any questions for me about design, suggestions for new tutorials, or just want a place to talk with like-minded designers about design or anything really, this is the place to be. So you can join by heading over to neurohaven.net or by checking out the link in the description. So I'll see you there. All right, so Dither Tone. This is actually a completely different product than Depth Tone, though you could probably use some similar effects if you really try it. Um, but if you're wondering about Depth Tone, you can check that out in the video I posted right before this. What Dither Tone does is create a stylized color separation of your image by isolating the tonal values and then bit mapping them using a diffusion dither algorithm. It's a lot more basic than it sounds though, so let me get into that. So as always, let's start off with our image. I just grabbed this off of a, I don't know, like a retro archive site. Um, and you wanna make sure you're doing this in a 300 DPI document. So um, whatever resolution you usually use, just make sure it's 300 DPI. Personally, I always do 16 inches by 20, 300 DPI, good to go. Um, so the action is pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. Um, and once you get your image in, the first thing you want to do is use the first action up here, separate tonal channels. But before I actually do that, I want to mention that there are a number of actions down here um, that you're meant to use prior to doing that in case you want to do some pre-processing to your image. So if you want to denoise it or remove JPEG artifacts from it, or I don't know, add some scan lines, which I have an option for here, um, then you're welcome to do that but I'll go over all those later. So let's start with the basics. Go to the first action in the action set, separate tonal channels, and we'll just go ahead and click play here. Okay, so the first thing that's gonna pop up is this little panel, which is just gonna ask you to choose your background color. Since the background of this is black, I'm just gonna click continue and fill it with black, so I'll press okay. Um, and now we get to the actual separation of the tonal channels. So anyone who's, um, familiar with my stuff knows the deal, but if not, it's basically gonna present you with four subsequent levels panels. Um, and the first one, as you'll see, is going to respond to the shadows um, tonal channel, which basically means you want just the flattest, um, least contrast in your image possible. Um, and I already have presets for you for all of these. Um, so in most cases, you're just gonna have to click enter a bunch of times, but if you want to mess with this, the option is there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. Click OK here. I'm gonna mess with this one just a little bit. Just get more out of there. And same deal here. Click OK. All right, so now we have our four tonal channels here. And the next step would be to actually bitmap these. But before you bitmap them, um, if you wanna duplicate all of them, just you know, for safety purposes, there's a group and duplicate action right here. And this action set is actually formatted to be sort of um, plug and play, so to speak. So there's no reason to manually mess around with the layers in between your use of the actions. In fact, you probably shouldn't mess with the layers because it might tamper with how the action works. So don't um, go clicking around here, just keep um, you know your cursor on wherever the action landed you and you'll be fine. So without clicking anything else, I'm gonna run the group and duplicate action. And that's gonna go ahead and duplicate all my tonal channels in a group down here. The group is already hidden, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but now you have all your tonal channels um, pretty much backed up. So now let's go ahead and bitmap. So there are a few options here. Um, basically, the smaller the number, the smaller the dots that you're gonna get. So the range goes from 20 to 120, as you can see, but if you want a custom size, you can always run this custom diffusion action. Now I'm just gonna go with a classic 72, um, and you'll see what that looks like in a second, and I'll also show you how it looks like um, with the other size off. So let's just go ahead and run this action on the first tonal channel here, Speculate. It's gonna do the job for you. It's automatically gonna to go to the next layer. So just run the action again, and again, 
and again until you got all the tonal channels um, bitmapped. So now let's go back to the first layer here and let's start deleting our background here. So we just have the um, bitmapped white part here on its own layer. And I already have an action for this set up clearly. So just click delete black or if your background's white, then delete white. And once you run it, it'll delete the black in your background and automatically take you down to the next layer. So just keep clicking on that until you get to the last tonal channel. Eventually, you're going to end up with all these on their own separate layer. So now it is time to colorize them. So I'm going to start off by just hiding these top three going down here. So you see that the layer actually has um, some effects on it, some layer styles. There is a color overlay. What you're going to want to do is show that color overlay by clicking right next to it right here and opening that up by double clicking. And now you can choose the color of this layer. So I'm going to choose a bright turquoise here just to stay faithful to the original colors of the image that looks good to me let's go ahead and do the next one i'll go for a lighter blue here same kind of idea with the next one I'll go for an even lighter blue maybe a little bit more purple in this one all right and then the top one i'll just leave it as white but if you want to change this you can go ahead and go into the color overlay here and mess around okay so that's about it i mean we got a pretty nice bit mapped diffusion dithered whatever you want to call it <laughs> dither toned image here um let's go ahead and group all of these and just name it dither tone. boom all right so we're pretty much done here we got the whole image processed using dither tone you don't like let's say how one of the channels came out like let's say you don't like um how the highlights look you always have your backup of your tonal channels here which you can just go ahead and try maybe a different size or do something to the layer to try and get a different effect going on so i'm going to show you really quickly how uh, a diffusion level of 20 looks all right would you look at that we got a completely different effect going on um a lot less detail but it's a really cool stylized effect um so obviously the memo here is um the higher dpis the higher diffusion levels are going to get you um, more detail in your image and the lower ones are going to get you uh, more of a stylized effect and less detail in the image but it all depends obviously on what you're trying to create here now let's go ahead and overview how these effects down here at the bottom would affect your image so we have the denoiser slash artifact remover we have the heavy denoiser we have denoise plus sharpen and we have scan lines um pretty self-explanatory i actually have an action pack on my website that does denoising and heavy denoising with a lot more customization so if you want you can go ahead and grab that but this will do the job just as good if you're not looking to spend extra money or if you don't need um you know further customization on that i think these work pretty well on their own so i'll show you what they do right now so let's go ahead and use the denoiser on this image right here let me just duplicate it to show you um, so we click play on here and you can see if we zoom in we lose a lot of those jpeg artifacts and noise that we had before. And we can actually run this multiple times um, to get a more denoised and smooth image. And it kind of creates a nice stylized airbrush effect, which I really like. And I use it sometimes, um, not even, you know, for this action, just to have that cool painted look. Um, and you can run this, you know, as many times as you want. But I also put this heavy denoiser in, in case you want to just blast your image with this effect. So let's go ahead and see what the heavy denoiser looks like. Bang. So, I mean, <laughs> you can clearly see the, the difference here um, and what it does to your image and how that compares to the normal denoiser. Um, you see, you probably have to run the normal denoiser maybe six, seven times to get this image. That's why I put the heavy denoiser in here in case you want to just completely remove any <laughs> JPEG artifacts or any noise or kind of get the stylized look on your image um, really quickly. Next up, we have this denoise plus sharpen action, which um, also pretty self-explanatory it denoises the image but it also adds a sharpen effect so that you don't lose out on too much detail so i'll go ahead and, and run that and show you guys what it looks like all right so now we have the denoise and sharpen image which doesn't look that great <laughs> on its own but in the context of actually using it with the other tone actions and bitmap actions the sharpening actually helps to bring out some more detail and obviously the noise reduction helps to um, smooth out any jpeg artifacts that might appear um, in some tonal channels so let's compare this to the normal denoised action. You can see the difference here. Um, let me just denoise this a little more, actually. Um, so yeah, 
this one is obviously sharpened up quite a bit um, and the effect will differ depending on the kind of image you have but yeah so this will just get you more detail um, from time to time using the uh, diffusion action now let's quickly go over how these scan lines look so let's just run this action right here all right you can see it gets you pretty nice scan lines here and once you actually do the dither toning on here it'll come out with a pretty cool effect so let me just do that and show you how it looks All right, so I've ran the dither tone action on this. You can see how these scan lines come out once we've bitmapped the image. And I think it's a pretty cool effect. That's why I added it in here, but obviously use this at your discretion. So now I want to show you guys how you might use this action for an image that has uh, multiple hues or colors in it. So I have this image here where I want to obviously run the dither tone action and get that dither tone effect, but I want to retain some detail in the color here, such as the skin tones, um, maybe the white t-shirts here and also the sky um, and i don't want it to just be one tone such as blue or red or anything like that um so my workaround to that would be to have um selections of each of the things you want to be different color selected out so i selected out these jeans and the shirt and the skin tones of the image so that when i run the action i can then reference those selections and pick the colors how i want um, and it'll make a little more sense in a second, so I'll show that to you. So let's go ahead and just run the dither tone action on this. We'll go ahead and separate the tonal channels. Now it is time to pick our colors. So I'm going to do what I did before, just hide all of these and go to this color overlay. I'm going to pick a gray for this. The mid-tones, I'm going to get like a bluish color. Something like this. Highlights will get me a kind of off white, maybe yellowish color. All right here, it looks good. And then the highlights or the specular highlights, I will get just a simple white. All right, so this is clearly not the image I want. I want these jeans to be in a blue, I want the shirt to be in a white kind of color, and I want the skin to be skin tone. So what I'll do here is I'll select all of these and I'll group them. And I'll set this as the base. And then for each color or each set of colors that I want here, I'm going to duplicate this and then put the layer mask of the selection on it. So I'm going to duplicate the base here. I'm going to call this jeans. Oops. I'm going to go and select out the jeans uh, selection here. So I'll hold command and click the layer thumbnail. And then I'll have this jeans group selected. And I go into the layer mask option here and just click it. And I'll create a layer mask around that selection. And then I'll do this for the rest of the items in the image. All right, cool. So now I have a different set of tonal channels for each uh, kind of item in this image that I want to separate out and get their own color onto. So these skin tones, I'll go right down here and I'll open this group up and set my own colors for this. So I want the um, shadows to be more reddish here. And then the mid tones. Probably more orange, something like that. There we go. Um, highlights, I'll go for something kind of yellowish. And then I'll keep white for these specular highlights. And then let's just do that for every one of these um, in here. So the jeans, I'll go ahead and maybe turn this to a blue color. So the shirts, I may want more of a warm tone to them. So let me go ahead and change these colors a bit. All right, so I think we've got a pretty cool final result here. I've got what I wanted. I've got all of the uh, skin tones on their own tonal channel. I've got the shirts on their own tonal channel and I've got the jeans on their own tonal channel. And then it all kind of merges with the background and it creates kind of a nice um, sandpaper look here. And if we zoom in, it's all pixel by pixel, nicely color separated. Um, what you actually see, if I go too close here, let's zoom into the arm, that there's a little kind of haze um, from pixel to pixel on the, um, the layer mask here. So it's not a huge deal in this case, but um, let's say you have an image where your layer mask is a little bit faded or it's kind of like a gradient. Um, that's why I added this 
layer mask um, action in here. So if I go ahead and open the layer mask here by holding Alt and clicking on the layer mask channel, you can see it's a little bit blurry and I want it to be perfectly um, clear cut and pixelated. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go out of this and I'm gonna run the layer mask diffusion custom action right here. And you'll see that it basically bitmaps the layer mask um, to give it the same effect uh, that one of these tonal channels would have. All right, cool. So now if I zoom in, you can see that it's all actually pixel by pixel. And if I go into the layer mask, you can see that even better. It's all bitmapped. And you can't really see the effects here, but you can kind of, um, you know, extrapolate the implications this would have. So let's say I had um, a different layer mask on here. Let's say um, I wanted the sky to kind of be a gradient. So let me duplicate one of these. Let me duplicate the base here. Bring it all on top. Um, I'm going to name this sky, make a layer mask here, and just kind of brush over the sky with a soft brush. Okay, so as you can see, I went from a reddish or purplish sky here. But if I zoom in, you can see that the gradient transition from one to another um, is not really pixel by pixel. Might be hard to see here, so let me go into the layer mask and show you. Um, it is all soft brush, it's very blurry, um, and we don't want that because we can't send that off to a screen printer um, or have all the you know colors pixel by pixel on their own layer once we color separate this. So let me go out of the layer mask and just run this action right here. forgot to mention by the way once you get to this point of the action just choose your desired um, diffusion level I use 96 on the image so I'm gonna go ahead and put 96 in here and just press ok perfect and once that action is done we can go ahead and open this layer mask and see what it did so if you take a look at this you can see it is no longer um, a gradient it is actually bitmapped into pixel by pixel calculations right here and now if we were to color separate all this we would have all the colors on their own separate layer all of it pixel by pixel no transparencies nothing and it's perfect for uh, color separating and sending off to screen print or you know just for having that cool sandpaper granny or bitmap effect no need to screen print if you just want the effect <laughs> i think it's pretty cool on its own but this does have implications for screen printing if you do want to use it for that all right, so that's about all I need to cover. Um, you may find that this process is similar to my video on my halftone diffusion pack, and that's because it's basically the same process, except this set of action uh, really streamlines that and makes it so much easier and faster, um, and you have even more uh, customization over things. So yeah, this is one of my most powerful products yet, right next to Deptone, I would say. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with using this. Please tag me in any artworks you post with it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me on Instagram at Duran Studio. You can purchase this product on my website, uh, DuranSupply.com, or just check out the link in the description. Besides that, I'll see you next time. Peace.